Hey guys and girls, hope everyone is having a great day. Today I'm bringing you a video ranking the top 5 APAC jetpackers. The ranking system is simple and follows. All rankings are decided by land placings and averaged out over the years. Players did not compete or place within the top 4 on a boots on the ground title. Cyber Gamer tournaments do not count. ACL Melbourne 2015 doesn't count. Crown Invitational international placings don't exist so it gets treated as a local event without Optic Gaming or Millennium. Any event where Mind Freak didn't play, every team gets bumped back a placing. Players must have competed at at least 5 LAN events. International events like MLGs, Champs and AVTs do not count. Let's get started with the list. Coming in at 5th place is coincidentally myself. With my first Jetpack event being the first does play on AW, I found moderate success placing 2nd without Mind Freak attending. However, I quickly fell off, placing 7th slash 8th at my next and final event being ACL Brisbane. Black Ops 3 was easily my most successful year, not placing outside of the top 2. Things took a turn for the worst however, with IW, where I had my worst Jetpack year, having T4 be my best placing and the rest being 5th slash 6th placings. Coming in at 4th place is now retired New Zealand pro Zeus. Zeus quickly found himself in New Zealand's best team only after a few months of competing. His first event was COD Champs Qualifier in AW, where they fell short of qualifying and placing 4th. He then went on to place 2nd as well with Does Play with me. Then decided to forge his own path for his future. Forming his own team he went on to place between 3rd and 5th for the remainder of AW. Black Ops 3 he found himself back with the Kiwis. Stage 1 they came in finishing tied 3rd. Straight after he merged with half of his roster with Orbit, who also tied 3rd in Stage 1. The team didn't find immediate improvement placing tied 3rd again at Crown. However his new team had great success in Stage 2 qualifying for finals and placing 2nd. Moving on to IW, Zeus and his fellow Orbit teammate got an opportunity to pair with the double D combo of Dens and Damage in Tainted Minds. This proved to be the strongest lineup to go up against Mind Freak, just falling short by one map of winning Sydney 1. Zeus then decided to go into a short hiatus before returning for the Melbourne qualifier for champs, with a newly formed roster of free agents. Unfortunately, wasn't able to deal too much damage and ended IW with a T6 placement. Coming in at third is New Zealand's longest veteran, Buckerbeck. Buckerbeck was dominating the New Zealand scene for years, but didn't start to have an impact until AW. His first event of AW, he placed top four at the COD Champs qualifiers. With a few roster changes throughout the year, teaming with myself and Zeus for the Does Play event, then sticking to the New Zealand roots for the remainder of the year, he found moderate success. Black Ops 3 he paired with Zeus from day 1, so their story is pretty identical for the 2016 period from stage 1 to stage 2 to champs. Buckerbeck found himself a free agent for IW, where he teamed with me once again until sudden roster changes before Sydney 1, where he was offered to play with a brother lineup where they placed third. However, after the event, him and I reunited not finding too much success for the rest of the year, placing 5th in the remaining 2 events. Coming in 2nd place is arguably Jetpack COD's best rising star, Excite. Excite was a part of a few rosters in AW that found average success placing around the T4, T5 mark. Not being 18 at the beginning of Black Ops 3 meant he didn't have the opportunity to compete from the very beginning. He turned 18 after Stage 1 qualifiers, but found himself in Apotheon for the first half of Stage 1 anyway. The final half of Stage 1, he joined Immunity with Buckerbeck and Zeus, where they placed tied 3rd. Afterwards, he found himself in a team limbo and played Crown with a pickup team, but put a new Immunity team together for Stage 2, where they placed tied 3rd again. IW was Excite's best year, starting in Chiefs, he soon found himself in Mind Freak after Denz's departure. With this opportunity, he was able to win both Sydney 1 and Sydney 2, before being removed from the roster. With the experience he had, he automatically went to the second best team, where he placed first in the champs qualifiers in Tainer Mines. 
A first place that may or may not surprise a lot of people is New Zealand's Fives King, Swiftazor. Swiftazor originates from the PlayStation 5v5 scene. Because of this, he missed out on AW 4v4, as everyone was playing on Xbox. However, moving on to Black Ops 3, so did a console change. He found the 4v4 scene on his home console. He decided to test the waters where he found himself on orbit, which was full of potential, placing third at stage 1, and then merging with Buckabeck and Zeus, found himself quickly ascending up the ranks, placing tied third at Crown, but in the grand finals of stage 2 in his first year at 4v4. IW, Swiftazor was MIA for the majority of the year when it came to preparation for events, as he was travelling, but still showed up for each event, managing to place 3rd at Sydney 1, 4th at Sydney 2, and 2nd at Champs Qualifiers. Swiftazor has managed to place within top 4 for his entire 2 year career, easily one of the most consistent players in our scene. I must also put in some honourable mentions. Nimble. Nimble had a rough AW season, but found nothing but success for the other two titles. Being a part of Orbit for the entire Black Ops 3 season, and then Tainted Minds for IW season, easily one of our region's best players. The next set of players is a duo, of Setsi and Zeppa. These two came semi out of nowhere in IW, and instantly started dominating. Being together for the entire IW season, they didn't manage to attend enough lands to fit the criteria for the list, but this duo found themselves in two grand finals out of their three events. On top of that, they qualified for champs on their first attempt. Would still expect great things from these two going forward. Anyway, thanks for watching guys, and I wish you all the best with your boots stuck in the mud on November 3rd.